Hey everybody, it's Ron Grant, and you're watching Just For The Record. Stay tuned, you're watching 284 Media. When you need to stay connected with friends and families at home or abroad, the best choice for you is Frida. CCT Frida. With the lowest rates in the market, our Freedom Plan gives you unlimited calls and texting. Plus, our Freedom One package includes 10 gigabits of super fast unlimited LTE data and unlimited calls to the BVI, USA, USVI, Canada, Puerto Rico, and UK lines. Why pay for overages when you can enjoy CCT Freedom? Stop by at one of our stores today and speak with one of our representatives to find out more about our CCT Freedom packages. Dr. Hubert O'Neill, welcome to Just For The Record. Thank you. Now, I've done some research. Whenever I sit down with someone I like to interview, um, or I'm going to interview rather, I Google them. Sometimes I make calls, pull up a stool in the community for which they are running and have a conversation with some of the people that they want to vote for them. Mm -hmm. And in hindsight, we can't please everyone. I think in life, if we understand that we're not perfect and everyone's not going to uh, agree with all the things we do or say, then right. we'll be all right. Mm -hmm. sure. So here are some of the stuff that some of the members of your constituents had to say about you. Mm -hmm. He doesn't relate well to the younger generation. There is the assertion that you accomplish little to nothing over the past four years after working relentlessly, one person said, to get a seat in the House of Assembly. I only see him around election time. One mm -hmm. young lady said, I'm a little bit disappointed. He's not a door. Uh, we can't see him. We're not, he's not accessible. And she also mentioned that they felt like you weren't visible after post Irma. When you hear the members of your constituents say stuff like that, first of all, how does it make you feel? And what do you, what do you say to stuff like that, just for the record? Well, um, when you hear it, it's, it's, uh, it's sort of negative comments, obviously. It does disturb me because um, the portrayal that you have in, in your encounters with some of the constituents um, shows that um, maybe disconnected as, okay. as what they're trying to in, imply. Uh, I beg to differ though, because I've been more than present in the district. I, in fact, I have an office set up in the district where I see constituents uh, twice a week on Wednesdays and Saturdays. And it's open to anyone who wants to come and have a conversation or have a question or concern or something. And I have been getting uh, frequent persons come into my office to come and discuss matters that concern themselves or their families for that matter. And I've engaged them. I've engaged them and I've tried to work on whatever problem that that they, they come to me with. Okay. And I more or less work on it immediately. Like often when I see someone at my office, I would pick up the phone and call say the, the authority, necessary authority that I, I need to contact to solve their problems. So I, I do that on a regular basis each week. And uh, they, by and large, the, the, the community does patronize my presence there on Version Garden. I also go to Anigada mm -hmm. uh, most times, um, maybe once a month. Uh, sometimes I don't get there religiously every month because one of the things that happened to me after the storm is that I, I had a, my own private boat. So I could easily just go to Anigada anytime I please. Okay. However, since not having my boat, it's very difficult now to get there. Um, I would have to take an entire day off to, to go to Anigata. But, you know, I have my other um, responsibilities. I, I still practice. Okay. I'm an active doctor and an eye doctor, and I, I see patients on a regular basis. I have to, to attend to that. Plus my other responsibilities, my other government responsibilities. House of Assembly, etc. So, um, but I do try to be present in the district. Uh, the young persons that you mentioned, yes, maybe um, not in the circles where they are. However, when I walk around the district and I, you know, I, I encounter anyone, 
I always engage whoever. Um, I don't have to know you, actually. I can. I, I usually go up to you and ask you how you're doing, introduce myself if, if I'm not familiar with you. But um, as to being um, friendly and engaging and so on, I think I'm very much that. Okay. And, and that's the reason why I think people in Virgin Gada and any Gada have uh, elected me because they feel comfortable with me. I am very approachable. I, like I said, I try to engage as, as much as I can. And I think from that respect, I've been doing a good job. In terms of accessibility, I never refuse a phone call. And I get many, many calls during the day, not just from constituents. No, you just mentioned about you, you think you're doing a good job. If you could rate yourself based on the, the past four years, what would, yes. what, would, what would your rating be of yourself in reference to performance as a minister? Well, I'm not, I, I just became minister. Actually. Correct. It's, it's just in the last few weeks that I became minister. Well, when I say minister, I mean but an elected minister. Elected official, yes. yes. Um, I, I, I'm not going to give myself high marks. Okay. Because I know that there are certain things that I promised the people of my district that I haven't really accomplished. What would a score um, be? I, I would give myself a B. All right. Um, I know I can do better. But there are certain things that happened in the district over from since 2015 when I was elected that has happened. And I think any elected representative would not have wanted to have to face these challenges that I had. Okay. Like for, for example, let me give you some, some examples. Even before I was seated in 2015, we had an announcement of the closure of Byers Creek Hotel. Mm -hmm. The result of that was the loss of some 75 jobs. And Byers Creek is a hotel I, you know, that has been around a very long time. And it mostly employs local people, especially from the North Sound area. And if you, if you have a layoff of some 75 persons, mm -hmm. just like that, um, obviously they're going to look for either alternative work or some other means of employment. Correct. The first person they come to is their district representative. And I have had to have dealt with that, along with my government, of course, the premier and his office stepped in mm -hmm. almost immediately. And we set up um, a help desk to help persons get uh, find alternative employment and so on. I was very much involved in that. And that turned out to be quite a challenge, but because imagine having to place 75 persons throughout the territory and having persons who live in Virgin Garden who cannot commute readily or easily mm -hmm. on a daily basis to Tortola. And that's where most of the jobs were actually in Tortola. Okay. It proved to be a challenge. But barring that, shortly after that, Little Dix Bay, the, the major employer of persons on Virgin Gorda, employs over 350 um, pe persons in, in Virgin Gorda. They closed their doors. Hmm. In, in, that was in um, 2016, January, just, just uh, January of 2016. Again, that was a, another challenge to me. It was a huge challenge, 350 persons. Of which, yes, um, some of them are just on work permits and so on. So some went back home. Now, how did However, you and the, and, and the premier and the government work to assist these persons? What was the way forward? Because I agree, mm -hmm. that's drastic. That's a big deal. It is. How did you guys uh, move forward? Well, again, we stepped in and I, I must thank the premier for his immediate action on, on this. We stepped in and, and we set up the... Um, the, the various departments, the labor department and so on, to, to find alternative in employment again. But it's, it's proved to be a challenge. And okay. up, up to today, there's still persons that have not found work wow. since that closure in 2016, you see? Wow. But on top of that, Ron, we've had another closure of YCCS. 
Um, this followed shortly after, I think it was like four or five months after Little Dick's Bay closed. And again, another 35 persons were laid off out of work. So moving so, forward, how do you reassure the people of the Knight District of your support and your intentions to help them in any way possible? Because that's just blow after blow after blow. Exactly. Know? So, And people have to realize that facing challenges like that and being just newly elected, it's difficult. It's difficult. But still I, I have had long sleepless nights mm. worrying about persons, trying to find employment for them and so on. But, you know, I, I am not complaining. It okay. is my, it's part of my job. And I have not shrugged my responsibilities at all. Okay. I have continued to work and work hard to try to get people um, to, to maintain their livelihood and so on. Even if it's the same, if it's not the, the job that they're accustomed to doing something in hospitality, that, or that something line. else. Okay. And... Uh, I've had um, pretty good responses and so on, and, and I'm pretty pleased that I've been I've managed okay. to help persons like that. But you could realize, Ron, doing work like that is on an individual basis. So it may not make the headlines. You might not see in the media that I, am, I did this of with course. this person, et cetera, et cetera. So people might see that, oh, I'm not doing anything. But I work 24 hours a day, practically. You know, um, I know I may, sorry, I might be exaggerating that a little bit. <laughs> However, I work around the clock so for the it, people. So would it be safe to say and for you to tell the people mm -hmm. that you're one of the hardest working ministers? I am, absolutely. Okay. And I worry about my people. I'm a true virgin guardian and I love my people. And Anigata, of course, don't leave out Anigata. I love my people and I do whatever, whatever I can to assist them in whatever which, I, which way I can. All right. Now, behind of us, there's yes. this beautiful, beautiful picture of yes. the bats on Virgin Gora. Mm -hmm. Funny story. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably going to get in trouble to, uh, with this. <laughs> yeah. I used to skip school and yes. go to the bats. <laughs> it's my favorite beach in the uh -huh. entire Virgin Islands. I just yes. absolutely love it. Yes. What does a better Virgin Gora look like to you? A better Night District moving forward uh, with all that the Night District has been to. We talked about the loss of so many jobs yes. and post Irma. Yes. It's the, you know, it's in the rebuilding stages and it's difficult. Mm -hmm. What does a better Virgin Gora or an entire Night District, not forgetting Anigata, look right. like to you? I'm very optimistic, Ron. And I, I say that because of how efficiently we have recovered from the storms. And I must thank all the volunteers that came out, Virgin Guardians and the Guardians that came out and worked immediately to clean up the district, clean up the streets, got all the debris off the roads, they, they clean up their, their, their neighborhoods, mm -hmm. their, their yards, etc. And without calling on government, right? It was mostly volunteer. Doing it themselves. Work. Exactly. Uh, certain organizations, of course, Electricity Cooperation that actually got, I think we, in Virgin Gotha, we were one of the first to get electricity back after the storm. I think it was uh, six months after. Mm -hmm. But we were one of the first to get, and because of the hard work of the Virgin Gotha Division of the Electricity Cooperation. But, the, the volunteers that came out, um, I must commend them. Even, even the expat community, mm -hmm. the many uh, residents that we have living there, it, you know, everyone just, just pitched in and, and did, their, did, did what they could with what resources they had. We had um, good help from certain you know, famous citizens like Richard Bronson, for example, um, Mr. Um, uh, from Nail Bay, the gentleman that owns the okay. Nail Bay Resort, okay. and also um, the other gentleman that, that owns the property at um, what we call Cow Hill. Okay. They actually flew in um, relief uh, supplies from abroad 
flew it into to, to B Island yeah. Airport and then transported to Virgin Gordon. Okay. And they continued to do that immediately after the storm. And they continued to do that un, until, you know, the supermarkets reopened and um, people were back out again and could get supplies. So I, I, I can't thank them enough for, for what they did. And so we have recovered extremely well. And Igada did not get hit as hard as Virgin Gorda. So they didn't have so much loss uh, in property, uh, uh, property damages and so on. So this, this sort of uh, rebounded a little bit quicker okay. than Virgin Gorda. In fact, I'm pleased to see, now that I'm Minister of Tourism, I was pleased to see I was in Anigata during a lobster fest and the amount of um, uh, tourism, mm-hmm. the, the revitalization of deal. tourism yeah. is, is huge. Huge event. Anigata is just um, the abundance of um, tourism, not just for the lobster fest, but In I'm general, talking about yeah. generally because all the, the yachtsmen now head towards Anigata because that's, that's where they, um, they, most of all the restaurants are open and so on. So they are doing extremely well with the rebound in tourism okay. there on Anigata. Virgin Gorda is a bit slower because most all the resorts were damaged, heavily damaged or totally destroyed. And they're now in rebuilding phase, right? But I'm so pleased to see that, you know, each week you see the improvement in services, in uh, commercial activity, in both Virgin Gorda and Igada. And as you know, in my district, tourism is really the only economy that we tourism have. Tourism is life, yeah. It's life. It's our lifeblood. And I myself, I, I was born in tourism because my family owned a, one of the first hotels on Virgin Gorda. Okay. A little tiny Ocean View Hotel. Didn't know that. 12 rooms. <laughs> so um, that afforded me and my family uh, our livelihood was in tourism. And I went to college, went to school, went to medical school, etc., through the proceeds of tourism in that little tiny hotel there on Virgin Gorda. Um, but, you know, all, all the little f- f- properties are coming back. Good. You know, the, the boutique villas and the, um, the, the smaller properties are also rebounding. So I see right now, I see... Um, nothing but good for the, the rebuild and the rebound of tourism generally and on my two islands, Virgin Gorda mm-hmm. and Anigada. Wonderful. So if, if you ask me, I am totally optimistic that we are going to rebound and we're, we're going to be, um, I wouldn't say back to where we were before the storm, because you know that, and it, that takes time. I, I, I suspect it may take maybe 10 years before we rebound totally. Wow. But I think we're, we're doing very well. We're, we're on the right track. And I, I, I see nothing you know, but good optimistic um, results from here on. All right. Mm-hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back with Dr. Hubert O'Neill. You're watching Just for the Record. Hello? Wait, you had a lunch, I care. You say you were sick? What happened to Albany rehearsal? Um, no, no, babe. I'm actually watching the news right now. Take, take, take a listen. Topping our newscast today, UFOs seen around Tortola Pear Park. And District 3 residents outraged over no water supply. They simply cannot bathe. These and more stories when 284 News returns. All right, babe, just get some rest, take to Advil, and I'll see you later. Bye. Okay, honey, I'll see you later. I love you. It's clear to see that Coconut Lounge is a place to be, the coolest cocktail lounge in the British Virgin Islands. A lounge like no other, with welcoming, professional service, and a breathtaking ambiance, not forgetting a diverse selection of wines, beers, and signature cocktails. Cozy, comfortable, contemporary. Coconut Lounge at Tortola Pier Park. Visit us today. Dr. O'Neill, you have been one of the members who have stuck around while many have left and uh, changed alliances. 
you remain a member of the National Democratic Party. Tell me in a few brief words what you want the voting public to understand about the new National Democratic Party. Well, I'm one of the founding members of National Democratic okay. Party. We came together in 1998 and we actually contested the first elections in 1999. And I ran for the 9th district on the, the ticket back then. I have remained with the party. I believe in its principles, its ideals. And we, we as, a, as a bunch of young men, we came together. Um, most of us were all professional. Not so young anymore. Not so young. <laughs> I, I know how <laughs> I, the gray hair that I have now so part is, of is part of life, part of growing up. And also, I, I feel I've become a little wiser Good. as well. <laughs> right? But back then, we came together because we all had the same ideals of wanting to see the, our beloved country progress and develop as we envision it to be. And that's why I joined the National Democratic Party and I have remained. Our first leader, Dr. Orlando Smith, was also my first boss because, you know, after I finished medical school, mm -hmm. came back home, I was working at the hospital and so on. He, he was the chief, uh, the, the chief um, medical officer at the time. So he's been my boss from even before I was in politics. Interesting. Right? And so now, so I have, I have put nothing but respect and confidence in Dr. Smith. Right? And I have remained with the party when he joined as well okay. as a founding member. And we have proceeded, I think we, we first became elected in the government in two, 2003. Uh, we did wonderful things. Yes, we got kicked out of office. Mm -hmm. However, we rebounded and came back in 2011. And uh, we came back with an even greater majority. Um, and this last election, of course, in 2015, um, even, even more so. But I, I believe in the NDP. I, I understand what is happening now. We've had some members who have left. They have left for various reasons. Of course. I, I am not going to speak for, for what their reasons are. It does disappoint me mm -hmm. because these are guys I, some of them I went to school with. Dr. Pickering was my very close friend. We actually were at the same level in school, so on. Uh, so is Ronnie Skelton. We've been friends from, from in childhood. Mm -hmm. Ronnie's a little bit older than me. He's, he was uh, in class with my older sister, but we've always had a close relationship. But that's fair of you to say you're disappointed. That's, you know. I, I am, I am, because I, I can't, until I have a, a sit down one-on-one -on -one discussion with Honorable Skelton and um, uh, even Hon Honorable Turnbull, I can't say, I can't put my finger on what is troubling them the most because they, they haven't really articulated to me individually. Or to um, the general why, public. Exactly. So we really don't know. Um, but I think the NDP is still very much a strong organization. It, as they used to say long ago, the NDP is a very a well-oiled machine. Okay. It still is. All right. And we have a lot, a lot of support in throughout the whole territory. Okay. Because we we present a, a new well, now that we're presenting a new image with uh, a new generation of leaders. Yes. And I practically have, an entirely uh, new slate of candidates. Basically. Almost. Yeah, almost. That's right. But I I have total confidence in our new leader, uh, Marianne Waldman. I have seen him, I've, well, I've worked side by side for the last uh, three, three plus years now. So I've seen him in action. Okay. He's a doer. He doesn't just talk the talk, but he actually goes out there and gets the job done. And I think that's what impresses people more than anything else. And likewise too, he is, he's also very engaging. Uh, 
and accessible. You can call him in, in any time of the day and to, to get things done. He has been a, a tremendous help to me in my district. Whatever activity is going on in my mm -hmm. district, he, he includes me. Um, for example, when we were rebuilding the Robinson O'Neill School, and we were fortunate enough to get um, the funding from Oil Not Bay Community and so on to rebuild that school. But he engaged me with that and the, the whole uh, process of mm -hmm. the redevelopment of the schools. We are now working on the Brigada Flex Educational Center. And, you know, he's always there when, when I need assistance in my district. He isn't the type of minister that just walks into the district uh, without notifying the, the representative. Okay. He, he offers, you know, that, that sort of respect and so on. I appreciate that. Because too often other ministers might just go and do things, then you hear about it in the media, okay. <laughs> which, which isn't too pleasant. Um, okay. So the, he, he's always offered me that sort of respect. Wonderful. Now, going into the next general election, in a few brief words, why should the people of Virgin Gora re-elect you? I have a number of things left undone. Things that I promised the people. Let me give you some examples. I promise a housing project, uh, a housing uh, program okay. for young persons, young families. And we have a lot of young families in Virgin Gorda and any Gada for that matter, that are in rental property. And they have been begging, asking mm -hmm. for so many years to, you know, just get a piece of crown land to build their own homes and so on. And I had started working on that diligently. Um, I, it was in the advanced stages, in fact, because you know this program that the Social Security Board started, where they were building um, yes. communities, uh, this housing uh, development, the housing development program. They were anxious to do the same thing in my district in Virgin Gorda. So I was at an advanced level with them, negotiating to do a similar um, um, program over in Virgin Gorda. And of course, the storms came. Hmm and just set everything back. <laughs> However, this is one of my pet projects okay. that I have to accomplish. We, before in 2015, we had managed to give out some 53 crown lots to young families um, in the Great Hill area in North Sound. But I had intended to continue to, um, to get titles for, okay. for young persons. But not just getting them the land, helping them to, but helping yeah. them to build their homes. So this is what the program was all about, and I still, this is this is a program that I I, I want to see it delivered for the people in Virgin Gorda and in Igada. Okay, and Igada too has its issues with land. Land's always been an issue in, on any Igada because yes. Um, once, once you can prove that you're any guardian you're, or of any guardian descent, you're entitled to your piece of crown land. But a number of persons still have not gotten their titles. And I'm working as well, very hard to get any guardians to get their, their properties and their crown land. Um, I have to also complete the, the Nurse Iris O'Neill Health Center. As you know, you heard in, in the news that we, we are planning to open that facility um, very soon. Okay. And that's, that's an accomplishment that I'm very, very proud of because I campaigned on that issue from in 1999. And to see it being the come to fruition now mm -hmm. that um, in my last year, in my term, it is most gratifying to me. Um, in being a doctor too, it's even more gratifying, all right? And for the people of Virgin Gorda who have suffered so, so, um, so much over the years with having healthcare access right. is very, very important. And so I'm very, very proud of that. Um, 
I, there, there, there are lots of other programs that I have not gotten to, okay. which I wish is, is, is going to, I want people to understand that these things take time. And so I am asking for their support once more. Give me another term so that I can accomplish these things that I promised the people. I, you know, I, I also promise, for example, to, to make Virgin Gorda the tourism, tourist destination of the Caribbean, right? It, it managed, I think it was in 2016, to become ranked one of the top 10 Okay. Uh, destinations, tourist destinations in the Caribbean. A wonderful accomplishment. But of course, we are again set back. Mm -hmm. However, I, I still want to get uh, Gorda back to that level again. But of course, to, to, to create or to produce a tourism product like that and to maintain it, you know, you have to, first of all, get Virgin Gorda and Anigata ready okay. to receive tourists and another promise that i made to the people was to beautify the the district the island itself and and to start what we call a, a recycling program for example to, to deal with the waste waste management i promised to close that landfill in virgin Gorda and to make virgin Gorda totally green uh, no burning of garbage, but we're going to recycle. You have to establish the mentality of waste as an asset and not something to just dispose of, okay. but to use it, okay? Whether to recycle it for, for future use or even uh, use it, but, which is bio, in any biodegradable type waste can be used say, to generate energy and so on. So that's the sort of thing I want to see happen. There's a lot more to be Gorda. done. There's a lot more to be done. You see, but a program like that, it's, and I would like to see it become a pilot program, not just for our territory, but I'm talking about the whole Caribbean now, you know, okay. okay? So to make truly, a truly green, um, green island. Also right. the, the other thing about, you know, energy, electricity generation, we, we have an abundance of sunshine and wind and we have the waves and so on. There's any abundance of energy there that we can use as renewable. We don't have to be burning fossil fuels. I think we have to get to a stage where we have to just el eliminate totally using um, fossil fuels. Okay. And that's one of my objectives to, to do that. All, All right. right. Let's play a little game mm -hmm. there, sir. No, I enjoy it. I don't know if my <laughs> guests enjoy it. Uh, I'm going to ask you a series of impromptu questions. Mm -hmm. And you're going to tell me the first thing that comes to your mind. Now, some people have not been able to answer some, and that's fair enough. Uh, yeah. But we're going to see what you can do with it. This is what I like to call, I bet they didn't know. Uh, celebrity crush. If you do uh... have one. I don't know. Uh, let me see. Um, celebrity crush. Oh, Let's come back to that one. Secret okay. talent. Secret talent. Fishing. Okay. I'm a master fisherman. People really? may not know that. Um, they only know me as a doctor, but I'm a master fisherman. Guilty pleasure. Uh, guilty pleasure. Maybe traveling. Okay. Just love doing that. Yeah. A luxury you can't live without? A boat. Okay. <laughs> so you're, you're trying to get another one since it, the, the storm took yours? Exactly. I'm right, right. Now, right now doing that. Okay. <laughs> uh, your biggest pet peeve? Uh, biggest pet peeve. Eh? There's a lot of them, you know. <laughs> tell, me, tell me the first one that comes to your mind. First one. Um... Maybe, maybe they, they, I'm going to politics again. Okay. Maybe the, the, the issue of 
belong and non belong. It's a good and one. It's a huge issue and it is something that's causing such division. And it's a pet peeve of mine too. <laughs> and that word indigenous just being thrown around. Yes, I, I don't like it. I agree with you. Actually, people don't know this, but I was born in St. Thomas, you know, I wasn't even born here. Right? Really? But my parents are, are BV Islanders. That's something they're, else they're they didn't know born about here. you. All exactly. Right. So that, that, that sort of thing bothers me. I agree. <laughs> uh, music would be surprised that you listen to. Uh, would be surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Jazz. Really? I'm into jazz a bit. I love country music. Country. Yeah. I love country <laughs> Good music. Good for you. <laughs> you know something when I went to St. Lucia and moving around the, the bars and so on around St. Lucia. That's what they play country all music the time. Everywhere. I, I was so shocked and yeah. you couldn't you couldn't even hear not even a calypso. Young, old, everybody, everybody in St. Lucia. In, into yeah. that. It, yeah. it surprised me. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Caribbean island, you know. But you know, yeah. people have their, their own little peeves. Yeah. So Well Dr. Neil, thank you so much, just for the record. Thank you. Good for having me. Thanks. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284media at cctbbi.com. Advertising with us works.